Starring Slim Goodbody. Sometimes it's soft, sometimes it's jiggly, sometimes it's hard, and sometimes it's wiggly. Sometimes it's chilled, and sometimes it's chopped. Sometimes it's grilled, and sometimes it's popped. Sometimes it's hot, and sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's flat, and sometimes it's rolled. But oh, what a taste when it's placed on your tongue. Yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum. Sometimes it's peeled, sometimes it's sliced, sometimes it's scooped, and sometimes it's diced. Sometimes it's baked, and sometimes it's toasted. Sometimes it's stuck on a stick and then roasted. Sometimes it's steamed, sometimes it's boiled. Sometimes it's barbecued, sometimes it's broiled. But oh, what a taste when it's placed on your tongue. Yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum. The journey of food has barely begun. From your mouth heading south, right on down it will come. Right to your tummy, tum, tummy, tummy, tum, tum. Oh, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum. There are all kinds of wonderful foods to eat. Fruits and vegetables, bread, cereal, eggs, milk, fish, beans, and nuts. And that's good because your body needs lots of different kinds of foods to live and grow. No single food all by itself contains everything you need. Why? Well, your body is pretty complicated. Just think about it. Your heart is beating, your lungs are breathing, your blood is flowing, your mind is thinking, your eyes are blinking, and on and on. Your body also needs energy. It needs to fix itself. It needs to stay warm. It needs to grow. And there's no one food that can do all of that for your body. And that's why you need a variety of foods every single day. But how do you know what kinds of foods to eat and how many of them you need? Well, fortunately, there's something called hmm, the food pyramid. The food pyramid? Oh, yes. I invented it. You invented the food pyramid? Mm -hmm. Sure thing. You want to see it? Well, that's fabulous. I'll get it right now. We've got the man who invented the food pyramid. Here it is. The food pyramid. No, no, that is a box, a food box. Mm -hmm. Oh, a box, of course. It's a box. I knew that was a box. I'm gonna get here. Okay, is. we met the man and he's gonna show it to the us food right now. The food pyramid! No, that's a food cylinder. The cylinder? Yeah, of course it is. This is the food pyramid! No, that's a ball. Here it is. No, that's a diamond shape. A diamond? I got it right here. Hold this. No, it's the food that's pyramid. a hexagon. Six sides. Hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six. six. Not oh, a course. pyramid, a hexagon. hexagon. Look at the pyramid right now. The food pyramid. That's an octagon, don't you octagon. see? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight oh, sides. Eight. An octagon. Oh, boy. Oh, where is that food pyramid? Now here it is. The food pyramid. Now that mm -hmm. is a pyramid. Mm -hmm. I told you so. So what's so special about this shape? The shape of a food pyramid helps us see very easily which kinds of foods we need to eat more of and which kinds of foods we need to eat less of. Huh? As you can see, the food pyramid is smaller at the top and larger at the bottom. Right. That means you don't need to eat as many foods from here at the top as you do from the foods at the bottom. That makes sense. There are different food groups on the different floors of the pyramid. Uh -huh. And one food group cannot take the place of another in a balanced diet. Oh. Now, down here is the largest floor of all, the grains group. Those are breads and cereals and pasta. From this group, you need more than any other. How many do you need? You need six servings a day. Wow. On the next floor up, there are two rooms, one for vegetables and one for fruits. Now, because this floor is smaller than this floor, uh -huh. you don't need to eat as many fruits and vegetables as you do grains. How many do you need? At least three vegetables and two fruits every day. Three and two? Hmm, five, I think, I'm sure, five. The next floor up is even smaller, and it also has two rooms, one for foods like cheese, milk, and yogurt, and one for foods like meat, fish, chicken, eggs, and beans. Oh. Grown-ups need two servings from each room. Wow, that adds up to four. Right. But there's something special here. As kids grow up, they need at least three servings from the dairy group. Oh, yeah? How come? Because the dairy group has foods that are really good for building strong bones and teeth. Oh. 
Wow. Up here on top, we find foods like candy, soda, fats, oils. Now, because this is the smallest room of the pyramid, uh -huh. this should make up the smallest part of your diet. Mm -hmm. And you can eat them once in a while, but they shouldn't take the place of foods from the other groups in the food pyramid. Well, thanks a lot, Slim. It was very educational, but now I've got to get back to work. So step right up, folks. I'm talking delicious. I'm talking nutritious. Food pyramids over here at my stand. You got your grains, you got your bread, you got your cereals, you got your pasta, you got your... When food, you're young, your grown-ups make most you of your, your food choices. But you can start doing good things for yourself right now, especially when it comes to snacking. And I've asked a good friend of mine to help us out. Joan Herzog Kessler, who's a registered dietitian, which means Joan knows all about good foods. Hi, kids! Hi! Why are fruits and vegetables such good snacks? Well, they taste good. They're good for you. They help your body grow inside and out, help your skin, your eyes, your tummy, everything have the energy that it needs to grow and to work like it's supposed to. Oh, I see. One of my favorite things about fruit and vegetable snacks is how great they taste. And a lot of times, they come in their own package, too. What about an orange? Well, that's a good snack. That's a super snack. An apple, all you do is have to wash it. Super easy. A banana comes in its own wrapper. Very, very easy to eat. Probably as easy to open that banana up as it is to open up chips. Huh? That's right. Who here is hungry after school? Me. Yeah, you need to have a good snack, don't you? What, yes. what do you like to have as an after school snack? You first. Peaches. Strawberries and kiwi. Celery. I like oranges because they're juicy. Carrots, because they're crunchy. <laughs> what terrific answers. You all like fresh, healthy, good for you foods. I'm really happy to hear that. Um, I brought a good variety, because you know that's a good rule of nutrition, try new things. So we have these fruit kebabs that I made for you with eight different kinds of fruits. Uh, I've got melons and grapes and prunes and papayas and pineapple. Wow, they look great. Now, do you think the kids would like to try some? I bet they would. Who here would like to try one? Yeah! Whoa, everybody. Okay, why don't we give them out? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wow, they, they love them. Thank you very much, Joan. You're welcome. You know, human beings aren't the only ones who need to eat food. Every single living creature, from tiny ants to giant whales, must have food to live and grow. Um, have some. Thanks. Peekaboo. Norman, are you a good eater? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Delicious bugs, they're my favorite. But down the hatch. Nothing like a little grass in the morning. Yummy. 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 Yum. Come on, guys, help me out with these leaves. Okay, okay, okay. Are you a healthy tortoise? I hope so. Yum, 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 yummy. Yum, yum. Food tastes great on your tongue, but your mouth is just the first stop on food's journey. After it's chewed up, it's swallowed down the food tube called the esophagus. Next stop is the stomach, which squirts digestive juices to break the food down. Now the food flows into your small intestine, where it's further dissolved. It then passes into the wall of the small intestine, where blood comes by, picks up the small pieces of food, and carries them all through your body, where they're used for energy. What you can't use goes to your large intestine. And later on, when you go to the bathroom, you get rid of it. Eating is fun, right? But did you know people eat different things all around the world? Yeah. 
that? Well, okay, here's a book. It's called This is the Way We Eat Our Lunch. A book about children around the world. Written by Edith Baer. Illustrated by Steve Bjorkman. Time for lunch. What will it be? Come along, let's taste and see. Doug eats chowder by the shore. Digs right in for clams galore. Benji on a boardwalk stroll has a hot dog on a roll. Max and Millie willy-nilly have their pretzels a la Philly. Merrily can't wait to try Mama's sweet potato pie. And Lucinda follows suit with a lunch of luscious fruit. When his appetite is jumbo, Lou has Louisiana gumbo. Just a little farther west, Sue likes tasty tacos best. Chip loves burgers, please well done, catch a pickles picnic fun. But the favorite lunch of Reggie's is a burger made of veggies. Salads, crunchy, crisp, and green, keep Petunia lithe and lean. In the prairie winter storm, soup makes Pete feel snug and warm. And Denise and Desiree share a light as air souffle. Plantains grow in giant bunches. Pablo likes them fried for lunches. Fresh tamales, spicy hot. Flora loves them. Who would not? Ama savors beans and rice. Cook with fish, they're twice as nice. In Morocco and points east, every day's a couscous feast. Mira and Jamila spread hummus on flat pita bread. And Emilio Marconi sprinkles cheese on macaroni. Belinda calls bubbles and squeak the jolly best meal of the week. While Ram, far away in Bombay, says, hurry, it's curry today. Mai's chopsticks are so much fun. Her dumplings are gone, one by one. Mayumi's tempura treat looks almost too lovely to eat. And in Queensland, Steve and Stu have a backyard barbecue. Time to get home. I have a hunch we'll meet new friends for lunch. Some of those foods sounded pretty strange, right? Yeah. yeah. But a lot of what tastes good are just the foods that you're used to. And if you tried something new, you might find it very yummy. I used to hate spaghetti, I was never ever ready To twirl some on my fork and swallow it down But one day I decided that I probably should try it And now I think spaghetti is the best food in town He really wasn't ready to eat up his spaghetti But now he thinks spaghetti is the best food in town I used to act so silly when I thought of tasting chili I thought it was a dish I never could eat but then my best friend Wyatt said, It's good, why don't you try it? And now a bowl of chili is my favorite treat. She thought it was so silly to eat a bowl of chili, But now a bowl of chili is her favorite treat. And when I saw some broccoli, just the sight would always shock me. The weirdest looking food I ever had seen. Then I tried it once at dinner, and it tasted like a winner. So broccoli turned out to be my favorite green. And now I'm ready for spaghetti. I'm silly over chili. And broccoli really rocks me, so I swallow them right down. Yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yummy, yum, yum, yum. Remember, there are so many wonderful foods. So choose wisely and eat well. So long. Yum. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, oh my gummy. Yummy. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy. Yummy, 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 yummy.